warm welcome back to the channel and oh boy uh, is this going to be interesting because this is yet more tit for tat is the only way of describing it as Benjamin Chu described it in one of his documents so in this in this video we're talking about the exchange of arguments in respect of documents um, audio recordings images and so on you may recall from the trial there was a lot of arguments as to the authenticity of photographs, of audio recordings, whether they'd been edited or manipulated. And a lot of this rested on the uh, metadata within those documents and when they were created, whether they'd been edited, whether there was third party software met metadata on those uh, files and so on. So looking through these uh, unsealed documents remember these are the hidden documents that were not shown to the jury they were arguments in the background largely over discovery of documents and exchange of documents and as i said tit for tat in in some sense now that's not a professional term by any means but it's the best way to describe it because reading through some of these there are multiple arguments for essentially the same thing typically when a court tells you no you you should really accept no um, if there's new evidence or new circumstances or something that really warrants the change in position then you can go back to court and you can make a supplementary argument but going back to the court and arguing the same thing again and again is is really not a good use of anybody's time much less the court so in this video i'm going to just look through one or two documents where there was such an exchange over uh, photographs and audio recordings specifically in respect of whether they were full audio recordings and whether the uh, images had been manipulated uh, by Mr. Depp um, based on the creation date. So let's take a look at those so you can get a feel for those arguments that went to and fro from the court and um, we'll have some discussion along the way. So moving to this first document here. This is a, um, as I said, there are multiple documents for uh, motions to uh, request production of documents and so on and so forth. This one such uh, document from uh, Amber Heard's lawyers and seeking um, production and uh, forensic imaging of Mr. Depp's relevant multimedia to test for authenticity, manipulation, deletion. And here's the real key for me in the argument in, in this document. Since much of the multimedia produced by Mr. Depp lacks a creation date in the metadata, no in, and, they, and it suggests no information to support when it was created, reflects that it was created after Mr. Depp filed the lawsuit and or was manipulated immediately before its production to Miss Heard. So looking at the first argument here, the metadata reveals manipulation and alteration. Mr. Depp's production raises serious authenticity and manipulation concerns, as most of the metadata does not contain a creation date, and items that do contain a creation date in the metadata mostly reflect the date after the lawsuit was filed. Now, moving away from the document for just a moment, I will task you now to find any document on your computer that was created, let's say, a month ago, a year ago, just some time ago. Make a copy of it, either Control or Command um, C for copy, V for paste, make a new copy of it. It will obviously produce a new version of that file, usually with copy appended to the file name. And then look at the creation date. It will be today, um, whenever you're watching this video. It will be at this moment, a new creation date will, will appear in the metadata for that file because you've just created a new copy of that file. So what happens, even before we get into the other documents, what happens in these uh, situations is the lawyers are called upon to produce certain documents to the other lawyers by their uh, represented party and they copy these documents. So it's going to create a new creation date. So even though this is not going to be a creation date from years ago when supposedly it was originally created, that's not going to be material on its authenticity. And yet, um, this is certainly what this um, document is arguing here. Secondly, oh, and excuse me, and be because of that, um, 
they say it's imperative that uh, Miss Heard be afforded the opportunity to examine the evidence and analyze, you know, whether, when, by what means it was manipulated. Now, there's another argument about um, documents that Amber Heard was ordered to uh, hand over, but it wasn't um, ordered as a mutual order. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but first of all, uh, looking at the audio recordings now so you can get a feel for the overall arguments. Um, it says here, over a year ago, the court ordered uh, Mr. Depp to produce all audio and video recordings that include Ms. Heard, and the, the UK court also ordered uh, to produce the recordings uh, that contained her voice. In response, he produced multiple audio recordings. Well, it describes them as m multiple partial audio recordings that begin and end in the middle of a sentence. Now, again, even before coming to the other documents, I would suggest to you that if you're going to record something, um, particularly if the other party doesn't know about it, or you're just recording it um, on a whim, you'll press record, you'll start talking, but you may well start recording in the middle of a sentence. So on the face of it, I don't think that is um, altogether very strange at all. However, this goes on to say... Um, Mr. Depp cannot explain why he only produced partial recordings and in fact testified um, that they were unedited and he deleted nothing. So we'll come back to that again in a moment. Um, and it, uh, it it goes on to talk about other, other documents and tar targeted um, analysis and so on and so forth. Moving to another document here, um, which also contains um, a cross motion to compel for production of forensic evidence and sanctions as i said there were a number of different requests such as this throughout this trial um there's a summary and background which is essentially um describing the situation that i've just uh, set out but um the arguments here um it's just scrolling back up to here again the, this is um again it was uh, under seal but this is johnny depp's lawyers essentially uh, explaining why this should be denied and this is where this term comes from so the opening for this this motion represents nothing more than an improper attempt by Ms. Heard and her counsel to retaliate against Mr. Depp for obtaining a limited forensic imaging of her devices so that's what I said there was an order by the court that she produced certain things because they had a relevance but the court did not order that both ways and it goes on, Ms. Heard has now filed two motions for forensic imaging of Mr. Depp's devices and twice failed to articulate any nexus, any link, any connection between her demand for an imaging and the issues in the case. That's because there is none. There's no connection between what she sought and the issues in the case. Um, the motion was filed for improper purpose and lacks any valid basis. The court should deny the, emotion, the motion and award fees. And so... That's the opening, and here's the underlying arguments. And this is where this term tit for tat. So tit for tat, um, if it is lost on anybody, is essentially a, a party retaliating just for the sake of it. So if one party has an order for something, the other party files an application or, or a motion for something just because they feel like it's a bit of fight back and it may not be necessary. That's what uh, this document is describing uh, this motion to be. So it says this motion is a continuation of Ms. Heard's improper tit for tat tactics. Proving that this is uh, more of tit for tat than trial preparation, Ms. Heard's motion marks her second attempt to obtain discovery that she previously argued, that she had previously argued, she does not even need. And then there's a quote from uh, said argument, um, which is Miss Heard is not requesting devices to be ordered for forensic and then third party review unless the court holds that he's permitted access to her devices. So argued Miss Heard in, in October when uh, Mr. Depp sought forensic imaging of her devices to explore one of the essential theories of the case that Miss Heard had manufactured false photographs and other evidence of abuse. In other words, Ms. Heard had openly argued that she did not need a forensic imaging in this case, but that she wanted Mr. Depp to have to do whatever she had to do. Hence, tit for tat. Um, if he can, I can kind of attitude is what this is arguing here. The court granted in part Mr. Depp's motion in uh, October requiring the forensic imaging of certain categories of photographs relevant to Ms. Heard's alleged injuries 
finding there was a legit legitimate nexus. There was a, a link between uh, limited forensic review and the issues in the case. And that since he contends that her photographic evidence of abuse is staged or otherwise manufactured. At the same time, the court denied um, Heard's uh, cross motion to make the order mutual because she'd not established a nexus. And again, there's a quote here from the court in this matter, as far as mutuality goes, because it's ordered for one case for one side, I'm going to deny the request at this time. There still has to be a nexus shown when you ask for those types of items in discovery. So there needs to be a nexus. There needs to be a connection between what the party wants and the issues in the case. They cannot just have a blanket, give me everything um, when it comes to uh, this kind of analysis, forensic analysis of devices and so on and so forth. Shortly after arguing that the court, uh, it was unnecessary for either party to have their devices imaged, uh, Miss Heard served uh, Mr. Depp, all of which framed de facto a motion for reconsideration, boiled down to a demand for forensic imaging virtually the entirety of Mr. Depp's devices, as well as devices of certain non-parties that happened to be in his possession, or in possession of his attorneys, excuse me. Um, Ms. Heard often offers a uh, flimsy pretext for seeking discovery that she recently described as unnecessary that she recently described as unnecessary scorched earth extraordinary and far beyond what the rules allow. Then it goes on. She's not even attempted to establish a nexus between the imaging that she seeks and the issues in the case. And there is a footnote from earlier above which I found interesting which again explains as I said at the outset there, there were multiple attempts for what is described as retaliatory discovery and so this footnote reads this is far from the first time Miss Heard has sought openly retaliatory discovery after Mr Depp sought discovery into her alleged charitable donations from the party's divorce settlement Miss Heard sought discovery into all of his charitable donations when Mr Depp sought an IME of Miss Heard Miss Heard turned around and filed a cross motion for an IME of Mr. Depp. Um, when Mr. Depp previously sought forensic imaging, Ms. Heard filed a cross motion in which she argued that relief sought was unnecessary, but should be ordered mutually. So in other words, her argument was not that she needed it, not that there was a connection in the case, not that it was necessary, but actually that it was unnecessary, but if he has it, I should have it too, is essentially uh, what this describes her argument to be. At the recent hearing, on the 11th and 12th uh, RFPs, uh, Ms. Hurd spent considerable time arguing the court should make the order mutual. And so this goes on, because there there are clearly lots of, lots of different arguments in here. And so... This is where it really comes to. It comes back to the creation date and, and the authenticity of these documents. Ms. Heard manufactured complaints about Mr. Depp's document productions are utterly bogus. This argues. Um, unable to point to a nexus, a connection between the motion and the issues, uh, she resorts to shockingly misleading argument that there is uh, supposed problems with his document production, which she seeks to characterize as manipulation. Now this, as I said, is to do with the creation dates and the audio recordings because they begin and end in the middle of a sentence. Um, if you were to flip on a recording device um, while you're in the middle of a conversation, it will begin and end in the middle of a conversation. If I were to flip on a recording device now of me doing uh, this presentation to you, it would probably begin and end in the middle of a, a sentence uh, in the middle of the conversation. Um, None of these things are, are, are ever going to be perfect, particularly if they're covert. Um, and even if they're covert, it doesn't it doesn't mean they're not evidence. They are, in, in many cases, they're better evidence because if uh, if parties don't hear um, the, uh, the the announcement of a recording, then they are sort of caught off guard. Um, but to that effect, there are there were two uh, declarations submitted in support of this response which is one by uh, Neumeister. So um, just going back to the top here. So this is Brian uh, Neumeister uh, instructed um, for uh, Johnny Depp. So 
he says he has extensive experience in collecting, analyzing, producing electronically stored information in law enforcement, legal proceedings, including around 600 cases in the last four years alone. Um, audio professional experience, 20 years of experience testifying and consulting for federal, state, governments, agencies, prosecutors, defense, Fortune 500 companies, individuals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, safe to say, uh, an expert in the field of uh, digital and electronically stored information. So based on all of that, he produces this declaration and quite clearly says here, this totally to cut across the suggestion that the creation date being after the uh, lawsuit was filed um, and much later than uh, supposedly it was originally created, this cuts across that argument as follows. Creation dates do not necessarily reflect when a file was originally created. Rather, creation date stamps indicate when a file came to exist on a particular storage medium. If you remember earlier, I said if you copy a file right now, it will have that creation date because that's when that particular file was created, such as a hard drive. Creation dates can thus indicate when a user uh, or computer created the file or can also reflect the date and time that it was copied onto a particular storage medium, just as I said. Where a file has been copied, moved, downloaded onto a new medium, i.e. you sent it by email, you've copied it to an external drive, you've um, put it on a thumb drive and sent it to somebody, its creation date indicates the later act of the file transference rather than the date the file originally came into existence. So uh, a creation date does not mean that it's been manipulated. I think it's far-fetched to say that, in my personal opinion. For these reasons, just because a file, a uh, certain uh, file of data has the creation date or modified date after the original creation date, does not follow the data has ne necessarily been manipulated or altered in, in any way. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that it hasn't either, but um, the creation date certainly doesn't indicate, it's certainly not uh, uh, any sort of strong evidence that it's been manipulated at all. And indeed, um, uh, Neumeister goes just slightly further to say, in my experience, it's very common in litigation for files to have a creation or even modified dates after the original creation date. And there could be a number of reasons for that. It could be part of a bundle, it's got a page number on it, then it could be have a new uh, edit date, modified date, and so on and so forth. Then we move on to the audio recordings. We also have a declaration from Joel Rich, who, at the request of uh, Depp's counsel, reviewed the six audio recordings. Now, of course, they were there were audio recordings in both trials. Um, based on the review, have confirmed that each of the six audio recordings previously reviewed by uh, Shillings in the UK uh, trial, um, Shillings did not alter, edit, manipulate, or otherwise change the recordings prior to production in the UK and see that the recordings produced in Virginia are the exact same length and content as the following six recordings. And as I said, um, just because an audio recording begins and ends perhaps in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of a conversation, that is not going to be, in my professional view, that is not going to be any kind of evidence at all that it is any in any way manipulated or, or twisted or whatever. So I thought this would be a, a very interesting uh, view for you about some of these motions in the background, what has been described as tit for tat, because that's the only best way to describe it. Um, so, as I say, not a professional description of the words, but... Um, that's no criticism of um, the lawyers that drafted this. I might have used the same phrase because sometimes um, when something is absurd, you might say that it's absurd. When uh, an argument is falling into farce in court, you may say as much because sometimes only certain words will describe exactly uh, what the lawyer thinks of the argument. And um, I make no criticism of the lawyer for doing that in this case. But nonetheless, I thought you'd find this an interesting um, background to some of the arguments over the photographs, the audio recordings. Let me know in the description, in the, in the chat box below what you think. And um, as I said, uh, there's much more of this to go through, but the more I read, the, the more interesting this gets. So uh, I thank you sincerely for supporting my channel. 
and allowing me um, the time to uh, to go through these documents and to talk to you about these for watching my videos please do like the video and subscribe and share it with somebody um, support the channel uh, by becoming a channel member if you wish that really will help me to continue uh, to uh, produce more of these videos for you in the meantime I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of this tit for tat thank you for watching Thank you.